Hey, good morning guys. Welcome back to another Robin's Math Workshop. Um, today is a pretty easy lesson. It's We're still in the metric, uh, metric system. Um, this lesson will be available on iReady Monday morning. Um, so make sure that you finish up your iReady this week for uh, metric units of length and uh, get ready for um, mass. How how much things weigh in the metric system and um, also guys make sure in case I ever forget this I hope you guys are watching these videos make sure even if you're knocking out these teacher assigned lessons remember we're only going to try to do about three teacher assigned lessons per week and that's per county they're asking us to do maybe three they still want us hitting our 45 minutes now if you go over 45 minutes that's good for you but we're not making you go over 45 minutes. That's why we're trying to hold about three lessons a week, maybe two if they're really long lessons, because some lessons are longer, but we're trying to keep everybody around 45 minutes um, in iReady math. So this is a super easy lesson here. This is, we're gonna talk about grams and kilograms. So one gram, one gram is kind of, I like to equate it to customary measurements when we start thinking about we have ounces is what we measure the smaller things with and then we use pounds when we start getting heavier well same thing with grams now I know in fifth grade you're gonna learn about milligrams which is even tinier amounts of mass but we're not doing that in fourth grade in fourth grade all you got to worry about is grams and kilograms and one gram is equal to about the weight, not the size. We're not talking about size here. We're talking about the weight of a paper clip. And I know there's different sizes, but that just gives you an idea. This is this is light weights, you know. So when I'm thinking of grams, that's how they would measure feathers. They would measure like if you had one grape or maybe a marble. Smaller, what we would say in customary lighter objects would be measured using the grams just like we would ounces now a kilogram one kilogram is equal to about a small pineapple is what example they gave us so but I like to write it down here so I can make it's a little over two pounds so a kilogram is a little over two pounds now how do we make this conversion from grams to kilograms well it takes one kilogram is also equal to one thousand grams. So one kilogram is one thousand grams. So one thousand things that weigh about the size of a paper clip equals one kilogram. Notice again, just like with the length, we're using those thousands when we talked about a thousand meters equals a kilometer, a kilometer. That's what makes the metric system kind of easy to grab a hold of real quick is because we've got the same type of conversion here where we're going to say a thousand grams equals one kilogram. But just keep that in your mind because when you do your iReady lesson, like I said, I go through the iReady lessons, it's going to ask you questions like what would you weigh a watermelon with would you use grams or kilograms so you got to start thinking about okay ounces and pounds and then it'll ask you maybe an apple and it's not always about size it's about that mass that weight but it has something to do with size too because you probably wouldn't measure an elephant in grams could you sure you could me uh, measure an elephant in ounces but you wouldn't use pounds and tons so just kind of keep that in your head as you go through this i ready lesson what would I use if I were using, because there's different types of scales, you know, and, and I have some scales around the house that when I'm making my rockets and I have to measure out like the, the powder for the, uh, for the uh, rocket engine, I measure it in grams. So I'm thinking small, lighter weight. All right, so let's do some of the conversions here. This won't, this won't take too long. This won't take too long. This won't be a bad lesson at all for most of you guys. will be like, not most of you, all of you guys will be rocking and rolling on this. Got to kind of adjust my screen here. Oh, proofread. I didn't proofread. Miss Robbins always says proofread. I forgot to put the grams. 
So if we said earlier that 1,000 grams equals one kilogram, or about two pounds. Let's do this conversion here. So if we had 3,000 grams, that would be how many kilograms? Yeah, you got it. Three kilograms. Same thing down here. If you had 9,000, if you had 9,000 grams, how many kilograms would that be? You've already got it. Nine. So you see that conversion. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. And that's what we're going to do on the other side. And that's all they're going to ask you to do is just bounce back and forth. So just remember, am I looking at grams or am I looking at the kilogram? Okay? So four kilograms equals how many grams? Well, we know that 1,000 grams equals a kilogram, so then I know that four, that would be four times a thousand would be 4,000 grams. Fair enough. Eight kilograms, well, I'm just keep counting by thousands because that's, that's the unit. That would be 8,000 grams. And you can see, just like in pounds and ounces, why you would want to you know, make that conversion up to kilograms. Um, as we move into it, you might start seeing some mixed um, units where you might see 8 kilograms and 40 grams. And that's the same as if we said, like if we were talking about something weighed 2 pounds and 2 ounces, where you have your, your pounds and your ounces. Notice that in, in that case, again, in the metric system, they're going to list the, the, um, the heavier unit, the the kilograms, then the grams, just like we do the pounds and the ounces. And same thing down here, seven kilograms, count, skip counting by thousands, seven times a thousand is 7,000 grams. So when you do this lesson, just keep in mind, think about the object, because there's a, some of them that they're gonna ask you, maybe they might ask about an apple, and you're like, well, an apple, is that a couple of pounds? Probably not, but they put these big, wide, ranging numbers like for an apple they might give you an example of I'm not gonna I can't really draw an apple so I'll just write the word apple and it might say would that be closer to 70 grams or 70 kilograms you just have to think about it for a second one apple well, I know an apple's not very heavy. I mean, it's kind of heavy. It's like a baseball. But I got to think about it. If I know my customer, 70, that's like two pounds. That'd be like 140. No, it's not 140 pounds. So now I'm thinking that it would be the grams. <clears throat> so just use that. And then maybe if it did give you an example of an elephant or maybe a bowling ball or something that you would think has more mass, that's, that feels heavier, then that might be when you would switch to using the kilograms as opposed to the grams. Now, Ms. Robbins pointed out that I asked a challenge the other day, and she said that Eliana had the answer. But the other day, so here's my challenge today. You know, I've got to remind me, because remember, there's a lot of gray in this hair, so I call, those, I call that... Um, like the gray in my beard, I call those forgetting whiskers. The more gray I get, the more I forget. I mean, the more I get, the more I forget. So um, so I said the other day that Litia had two five pound dumbbells. And I wanted to know how many ounces that was. So she had two dumbbells that were five pounds each, and I want to know how many ounces. And I also said that Mr. Robbins weighs 160 LBS, Libra Pondo, pounds, is equal to how many ounces? Well, let's do this today. Now, this is going to be an approximate. It's not going to be exact. But if we say that Mr. Robbins is 100 
and 60 pounds. I want you to tell me it's equal to how many kilograms, and you can just round it because it's going to give you a little bit of it because remember it's 2.2 pounds per kilogram, so just round it. And then when you tell me how many kilograms, try to tell me how many grams that would be. So that's going to be a big number. So I will try to remember to answer this this morning because I know Eliana had the answer. And then today, maybe Monday morning, you can tell me approximately, approximately, how many kilograms Mr. Robbins weighs and how many grams that would be. So um, we're going live here in just a few minutes, but while we're doing that, I wanted to talk a little bit about our science test today. Um, most of you knew that we had a um, study guide. We put that study guide up Monday, Ms. Robbins? Yeah, we put it up Monday. Um, it's on the slides that you've been going over. Um, next, I believe what we're going to work on is ecosystems. We're going to talk about consumers. We're going to talk about producers. We had, we had kind of started talking about that a little bit in school in the HMH. Um, but we're going to get a little bit more into habitat and the ecosystem and how animals are dependent upon their ecosystem. Um, I know I'm fixing to get the hook here any minute, but let me see if I can go over some of these questions. Um, I know that some of the things that we're going to be asked, sorry about that, some of the things that, that we should have learned in that study guide and through those slides is uh, what do plants need to survive? Well, I remember that plants need, we think about that, they in photosynthesis and all that kind of stuff plants need three major things they need the sunlight they need water and they need carbon dioxide remember the print plants use the carbon dioxide and they breathe out as people like to kind of say they, they breathe out the oxygen that we need so um but they got to have sunlight if you take a plant and put it in the closet it's, it's gonna die it needs that sunlight so make sure that um whenever you answer that question Think about it, it needs three things, three things. Uh, what part of the plant, we talked about where does photosynthesis happen? It happens in the leaves. It happens in the leaves. A lot of people say the leaves is what captures the sunlight so the plant can eat. So I think of the leaves kind of like little solar panels. Some of you raised your hand earlier this year and said you had solar panels on your house or that you've seen, and those solar panels absorb the sun. Well, that's what the leaves do. Notice the leaves are flat. And, and they're usually angled in a way that they can capture the sunlight. Kind of an interesting thing. Um, I've seen experiments done where people would take and simulate the sunlight with a, with, a, uh, with a light. And they would watch as the plant would try to grow toward whatever the light source is. And as they would move it around, over time that plant would slightly kind of grow toward that. So that kind of lets you know how much they need that sunlight. Um, we talked about organelles and plant cells. Um, that's the chloroplasts. Um, it's a bunch of big fancy words. Um, this is where the uh, actually the organelles where the photosynthesis happens and remember photosynthesis is how the, the the plant is making its food how it eats um, and we'll, we'll we'll talk about um, what that turns it into we talked about how it turns it into like the sugars and the energies that it needs um, Some of the things that you need for photosynthesis, you've, you, you've got to have, we said the sunlight, obviously. you got to have the carbon dioxide component. Water, plants need water. And uh, plants need nutrients in the soil. Um, whenever we plant a new flower, you'll see in the base, they'll give you like a little starting kit. Some people put fertilizer or different things in it, but they, that, the soil has to have nutrients, just like our body needs nutrients. Um, we'll talk about is this food nutritious? 
Is it nutritious? Is it going to give us what we need? Well, that's the same thing. The plants need that dirt or that soil uh, to have the nutrients in it that it needs. Um, let's see. What else do we need to know here for this test? Like I said, everything that is on the... Um, the test I put on that study guide. So I want everybody to make sure they're learning it and making a hundred today. Um, what parts of plants are visible? Um, it's going to give you maybe a picture and think about the things. You see the stem, the leaves, those are the things that you see. The things that you uh, don't generally, and I know you say, well, sometimes I see, but, but generally the thing that you don't see of a plant are the roots. Remember the roots are what goes down into the soil. That's what absorbs the water. That's what absorbs those nutrients. Um, I like to think of uh, the stem, I like to think of it as a straw. The roots are what's tapped down into the ground. The straw or the stem absorbs and sucks up the water from the ground with the nutrients in it. Um, I'm actually looking at the actual test, so I'm trying not to like tell you exactly what's on the test, but the study guide kind of did. Um, we need to know what the stem does. The stem of a plant, um, I just talked about how it carries the water to the leaves. I like to think of the stem as kind of shaped generally like a straw, so it, 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 it draws or carries um, the water to the leaves. Um, the stem is what holds the plant up. You say, well, are trees considered plants? Yes, and we think of the big, the, the, the trunk of the tree would be the stem that holds the plant up. Um, and the stem holds up the leaves. So that's that stem. I like to think of it as, whether you're talking about the trunk of a tree or you're looking at a, a plant, it is, it is the tower. It is what holds everything. It is the support mechanism of a plant. Um, roots. What are roots for? Well, we know that roots, uh, we've already talked about it, how that absorbs. So think of a plant. This is going to be very ugly here. So here's my stem. This is going to be kind of a hybrid between a plant and a tree. So here's a tree. And then here's the roots down in the ground that go everywhere. So the roots, all of everything under the ground where the nutrients is and the water, the roots absorb that and carry it up through the stem or the trunk, depending on if it's what terminology we're using. So the roots, they gather all of these nutrients and stuff. Also what the roots do is they, they're like an anchor. They help hold it in place. If you don't have strong roots, that's like maybe when you drive through your neighborhood and you see new trees that don't have, they just planted and the roots aren't down in the ground good and they haven't really started to, because these roots will keep growing deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, you'll see the tree fall over sometimes. So that's why the, those roots help hold that, that tree or that plant in place. So you've got to have a good anchor. Think of this as an anchor to hold it in place. So it doesn't matter how strong this is, if this base, that foundation isn't strong, then the whole thing is going to topple over. Um, then there was a question, I mean, on the study guide we talked about, tap roots and fibrous roots eh. so the the tap root is the entire root system in one big root so i i know when i dug up some plants in the front yard uh they were a type of like a palm now i'm saying all palms are this way but it was a type of palm it had one big root and that was a tap root. It was all together into one big uh, unit. Where fibrous roots, they kind of 
spread out in different directions. Like this would be more of a fibrous root system here where they spread out everywhere and um, they hold it in place where the, I've lost my eraser, where the tap root has the whole root system like more into one big, big unit of uh, the root system, so to speak. And uh, when Miss Robbins and I, oh, uh, like I said, when we dug up a, <clears throat> a certain type of uh, palm in the front to move those, it had just one root, just one big tap root versus the ones that spread like little river branches and fingers everywhere. So like I said, if you studied that um, study guide, you'll do well on the test. I will tell you that you say, well, it's only nine questions, kind of, because some of the questions, a lot of the questions are multi-select, which means don't just read the question quickly. I'm fixing to get yanked off here, be live here in about it's one minute. Okay, I'm getting off. But a lot of the questions have more than one, so read it carefully. Some of them might be an all or above, it might not be, or it might have three or four that you have to select, so you have to look at all the answers. All right, we're fixing to go live. I'll see you in about 30, 40 seconds. Bye.